Good morning, good morning, Big Square Road to Root.com with your morning corner of Z's, your sip of coffee. Uh, crypto markets are massively broken and they always have been broken. Complete fraud. I'm not saying these latest rises are wrong. I think cryptos are massively undervalued. Um, I just see the numbers and I scratch my head and say, where are these trades coming from? All these exchanges, all of them are trading crypto derivatives. There are no cryptos trading right now. I'm going to say it again. So for the four millionth time, take your cryptos off the exchanges. I'm just going to, I'll, I'll just point out how broken they are right now. Here is the last uh, 24 hours in Litecoin as far as volume. Look at Litecoin number four, their volume. Five million or five billion, 44 million dollars worth of Litecoin traded in the last 24 hours, 24 hours yesterday morning at this same time. Now look at the total market cap of Litecoin, $5 billion, $100 million. Complete and total fraud happening on these exchanges. No, it is not undervalued. It is not overvalued. It's massively undervalued, massively undervalued. Because remember, every one of these buyers of the five billion dollars worth of Litecoin, there's a seller. There's a seller on the other side selling that five billion dollars worth of Litecoin. Who are these sellers? Who are they? Nobody's selling that I know. It is insane. It is a control mechanism. They trade high frequency trades, phantom trades back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to steer the price. Control it up, control it down, control it sideways. What should Litecoin be today? Probably I would say two to three thousand dollars per coin. That's how rigged this crap is. Absolutely 100%. Get your cryptos, but get them off the exchanges and don't look at price. Price can go anywhere. Like I said, a click of a mouse that can put Litecoin or Bitcoin or anything to a million dollars a token. A click of a mouse. Or they could put it to zero with a click of a mouse. The problem is all these exchanges are complete frauds. Let's point out some of the frauds on the exchanges. Now, a lot of these exchanges have no head office, have no senior management team, have nobody associated with them, except they're trading billions of dollars. It's ridiculous. So here's the latest. Look at, look at the 24-hour chart here. Boom, right here. Bang. From 70 to 84. Why? Because it was massively too low, and it still is. Why also? Because they rig it every day in every trade. It's insane. Problem is a lot of people need Litecoin now. A lot of the exchanges are trying to get their hands on the real thing, and it's just not out there. You can't get any. Let's go to markets, see where the most volume's happening. Coineal. Coineal did <laughs> a half a billion dollars in Litecoin volume in the last 24 hours. Let's take a look at this exchange, Coineal. Coineal. Look at all that volume. They did 600 million in Ethereum, 500 million in Bitcoin, 400 million in Litecoin. Those are the three biggies, obviously. Uh, it looks like no EOS guys are in there. They're all over at uh, Bitfinex and all that. <laughs> Coineal. Let's, let's find out about Coineal. So we'll go to the Oh, look at that fancy web page. Where's the about? What is about Coineal? What is Coineal? Anybody know? Coineal lists. <laughs> oh, list level. Coineal. Announcement. ICX. Mainnet swap. Where is Coineal? Let's find out. Coineal Exchange. Oh my God. It, it started, it was announced on April 24th. Coineal was announced. So in what? One year, they took up all the volume there and they're number one now. Oh yeah. Coineal found online. Coineal.com is a cryptocurrency exchange founded by a team based in South Korea and China. What is the team? Who are the team? 
The exchange was announced on April 24, 2018. Coinial currently maintains offices in South Korea and China. They're also planning to launch offices in Japan, Singapore, United States, Russia, and other countries. Okay, Coinial. <laughs> who are you? Who, who art thou, Coinial? At the time, it was ranked 141, except now, it, <laughs> and they were way up the charts. Insane. All right. So, yeah, it's ridiculous. The whole thing's ridiculous. Make sure you know where you're trading. Just got to get back to where we were. So, yeah, don't... <laughs> Don't go to these exchanges. But they're making a volume. And who? And they determine price. Right now, Coinial is the number one determinant of Litecoin price. Coin market cap is a joke. It is a joke. Probably criminal. <laughs> criminal because they don't vet anybody. I can say Big Square Exchange is opening an exchange today, and we're doing forty-seven billion dollars worth of Litecoin volume. Here, Coin Market Cap. Here's my numbers. Once you post them, add them into the average, and there you have your price for Litecoin. It's a complete fucking joke. Anyway, you deal with the hand you're uh, you play with the hand you're dealt. That's it. And our hand right now is looking real good. Uh, Litecoin's at eighty-four. Bitcoin's up above 5,000, looking at 5,200 for those traders who are already out of the market. <laughs> None of them called this move. None of them. Not one of them. They're all looking for, oh my God, we're going to go back to $2,000 to $1,000. We got to test the lows. But they all say they nailed it. Can't wait for Bo Pony to come. Oh, I nailed that one. <laughs> 400 misses in one hit, and then it'll promote the hit. Crazy stuff. This is crazy stuff. But it's very good. Jason at four will be very happy because his Bitcoin cash is moving. He, I guess he moved out of Litecoin and was saving some cash to buy Litecoin again, but that didn't work out. But he jumped in pretty big time into Bitcoin cash, so he should be happy about that one. Thank God he's not going to the broke house. Good job, Snippy. Um, and let's see what else is going on. Bitcoin over 5,000 is a great number. Ethereum massively undervalued. Massively undervalued. It's going to move. Huge XRP should be in the toilet. I'm not an XRP fan. I just don't like the whole concept of it, uh, and that the bank it's the banker coin. But still, I don't like it. I don't like it for a lot of reasons. <clears throat> Bitcoin Cash, I love. I think it's fast, and and Roger uh, has the best intent for uh, using cryptocurrency as a day to day means of exchange. Always been his mantra. Which is great. Which is the same as Litecoin and Charlie. Charlie and Roger are the same thing, but Roger's just a little too annoying for everybody. <laughs> EOS is a criminal coin. No doubt about it. Um, I don't know what to say. Bad people run it. Bad people. You have to trust bad people. That's the problem. Cryptos are supposed to be trustless, my friends. Trustless. So 21 block producers, let's laugh about it just like Satoshi laughed at Dan Larimer. <laughs> If you don't get it, I don't have the time to explain it to you, Dan. Oh, God. But they, oh, my God, the devotees for EOS are just off the charts. Um, and they'll, you know, they'll they'll believe EOS black, probably black. It wouldn't be blue. It would be, it would be EOS black. Um, and they, they trust in the people behind Bitfinex and Tether. That's who they're in bed with at Block One. So good luck to you. I do wish the best of luck to everybody, except the bad people who need to go to jail. Binance Coin is a con. Cardano, not bad if you live in Asia. I love it. Um, Stellar's good. Tether's the freaking joke of the of the world. I think uh, the latest pump of EOS is to get some cash into Tether. Although EOS or uh, Tether doesn't claim anymore that it needs cash. Now they just need the value of tokens because apparently it's not backed by the U.S. dollar anymore. It's backed by cryptocurrencies. <laughs> Tether, you know, the funny thing is the DOJ has been in there for, what, over a year. They have all the goods on these criminals, all the crypto cabal and block one and all that, and they can arrest them at any moment. They just haven't pulled the plug. It'll be a good day when they do. I don't care what happens to the price of cryptos. It'll be a good day when the 
The criminal, these real evil criminals are gone. Toronto is a joke, in my opinion. They're liars, cheaters, and stealers. Again, you got to trust management. And the guy at Toronto is just ridiculous. Um, Bitcoin SV, who knows what's going on with that? And yeah, truthfully, I think it's uh, probably part of the deep state, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't think uh, Craig Wright is Satoshi at all. Not at all, not even close. He doesn't have the mindset. Um, Dash, I like Dash. Love Monero. I like IOTA. Neo's okay. A lot of these Asian coins will do well in Asia. If you're in the U.S., I'd say Litecoin is the right coin, my friend. <laughs> uh, Bitcoin, obviously. And I think there will be a lot of great coins. Vertasium is probably the most undervalued at the moment. Um, and Theta has massive room to grow. So, And they haven't moved at all with this latest jump up. Um, I'm not saying sell your Litecoin and buy Vary or... Uh, Theta, I think Litecoin's got a long way to go because we're inching up to that point where we need cryptos as money. And that's why I've been so jumping up and down about uh, coins that can be used as money like Litecoin, like uh, Bitcoin, or actually Bitcoin Cash as a use of money. Because that's going to be the big use case. The monster use case when the banks go down is... We need a form of money to use on a day-to-day -day basis. And Litecoin is the right coin for that. And speaking of that, <clears throat> Deutsche Bank, U.S. unit, kept dance shady billions flowing. This is coming from Bloomberg. Remember, they don't say this kind of shit unless they want to destroy a company. You destroy Deutsche Bank, you are going to destroy the entire monetary system because they have $45 trillion in derivatives. It's that simple. It's come down to that. Uh, Ex-workers say scrutiny of individual clients was discouraged. German lenders' U.S. subsidiary draws focus of Fed regulators. What? The Federal Reserve is going in to destroy Deutsche Bank, the largest derivative holder? Don't you know what that means? <laughs> I've been saying it all along. I am going to attach my discussion with Dick Allgaier to the end of this video. Uh, we talk about the good guys and bad guys, and he is convinced that our controllers will always control us. I am convinced there is a way out. The way out is was planned by Alan Greenspan in the 60s and 70s. Give the banks enough rope to hang themselves, let them create as much derivatives as they want, and then pull the plug. You destroy their power mechanism. What is their power mechanism? Money. They control us through money. So, yes, it will be messy. I guarantee you that. But it will be a lot worse if we let it go on. So, yes, absolutely. Destroy Deutsche Bank. And destroy every other bank. Yes, all the 401ks and housing prices, everything will drop to almost zero at all times. It is what it is. It was the game we were playing, and now the game is going to end. And if you want these criminals out of our lives, that's the only way to do it. And we can get back to something sane, or get to something sane. It's been so long, I don't know <laughs> what it'll look like, but it will be very exciting to get there. And I think the good guys are winning, absolutely, as you will see at the end of this video. All right, uh, years before regulators learned about what may be one of the biggest money laundering pipelines in history, low-level bank employees in Jacksonville, Florida, sounded repeated alarms. Compliance workers for Deutsche Bank flagged some of at least $150 billion in transactions that the bank's U.S. subsidiary handled for a tiny Estonia unit of Nance Bank, according to a compliance officer. Is it, now, these are people telling the Fed and telling the U.S. Treasury there's fraud going on, but the whole time... Obama's Fed and Obama's Treasury was complicit. This is how you keep the system going. And interesting, out of Florida, huh? That's where Jamie Dimon said they transact $5 trillion a day. Ah, Jamie. Jamie and Deutsche Bank. Blythe Masters is already in jail, apparently. I don't know about that. I'm just guessing. It's not clear how urgently the Florida team warned executives that Deutsche Bank Deutsche Bank's Trust Co. Americas, but when workers sought broader scrutiny of certain clients, they got familiar response from higher-ups. The officer said, shut up, focus on the transactions in front of you, file your paperwork, and move on. That's classic bank talk right there. Internal documents, court records, and interviews of dozens of people, including more than 20 current and former employees of the troubled German lenders, show that its U.S. unit largely res resisted strict money laundering compliance for years. I've said it a million times. 
cryptos are not for laundering money. The U.S. dollar and the U.S. banking system is for laundering money. Cryptos, yeah, you can launder a couple million here, a couple million there. If you want to do the billions, you go direct to the source. You launder through Bank of America, Deutsche Bank, all these banks. And the funny thing is, all these transactions have to go through the SWIFT system, have to go to the Federal Reserve, have to go to the central banks. They were all in on it. They cannot do it alone. They had to go through the SWIFT system. So the fraud was all the way up to the top of the banking system, those who controlled the money. Though U.S. executives routinely promised regulators they'd get tough, former staffers say such efforts were often disregarded in favor of cozy relationships with overseas customers. The suspicious billions kept flowing, not just from Dan's Estonia branch, but from various clients that would eventually be snared in other global money laundering scandals. Frankfurt-based Deutsche Bank, which is in talks to merge with Commerce Bank after years of losses, declined to address the allegations about its practices. They don't trade with each other. Again, $5 trillion a day coming out of J.P. Morgan out of Florida. I think their, their market, entire market cap of J.P. Morgan, the largest bank in the world, is, is $2 trillion. And yet they're, they're shuffling electronically $5 trillion a day. Complete fraud. All right, so we know Deutsche Bank's a fraud, but the question is, is not what is said here. We already knew that. The reality is, why is Bloomberg, a, you know, it's a huge media corporation, exposing this to the world now when the banks are at their weakest, when Deutsche Bank's at its weakest? It's to help destroy the system. And there's mysterious people being fired from Deutsche Bank. Oh, I just lost that one. <laughs> but this is what would happen. If if Commerce Bank and Deutsche Bank merge, it says Commerce Bank's stake would cost German taxpayers billions of euros. What do you think is going to happen when all this dirt comes out on Deutsche Bank and, and the German people find out it's going to raise their taxes massively? You think they're going to allow this to go through? No. There's not going to be no merger. It's going to be chaos. If there is a merger, the, who gets screwed? The German taxpayer. Because they're going to have to pay it because the EU can't bail that out. Or they'd have to bail out the Italian banks, the Spanish banks, all the other banks. So it's German taxpayers on the hook. If you live in Germany, either get out or get rid of your government. <laughs> like the U.S. did. We're getting rid of our government right now, and it's awesome. All right, I'm going to go on to show you guys the interview from uh, the beach in Maui where Dick and I talk about um, overthrowing the bad guys and where we stand on that. Um, we do still have tickets for the Freedom Roadshow, Blanco, Texas, Friday night. Friday night. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's for a great cause, and it's great people going to be there and great barbecue. So check it out. It's the first thing, RoadToRoad.com. If you're going to the show, uh, we're going to start meeting around 5 o'clock eat about 5 36 and then the show starts about seven um and it goes for however long we need to go usually about two hours um but uh yeah there's plenty to eat and drink so you can handle it you'll be good and i just played in hawaii it was awesome it was very fun it was mainly for friends and family and there's a couple of road to root people there thank you guys for showing up that was awesome uh, dick allgaier jumped up played a couple songs too so I did, I did some of the uh, crypto stuff and some of the gold and silver stuff. Uh, they love the song They. It was a big hit to just people on vacation. They're like, well, who is this guy and where's he coming from and why is there all these people sitting here clapping? Um, and then I did a bunch of covers. You know, American Pie is always a showstopper. So, uh, yeah, if you want tickets to this show, go to roadtoroad.com and click uh, on the first thing and you'll get to either directly to... Litecoin leases charity, or you can pay with Litecoin. Send me, uh, they're 100 bucks a ticket. All the proceeds go to charity. And it's a big charity event that weekend, so make sure that you pony up. Uh, and if you just want to uh, contribute to Litecoin leases charity, she needs all the contributions you guys can muster, and there's a link right there. All right, now here is the video of Dick and I on the beach. Dick's a great guy. I love him to death, and we love to fight. So here you go. Hey guys, this is BigSquareRoadDirt.com, coming live from Maui. 
where I ran, just walking down the street, I ran into one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, Dick Algar. I stole his microphone, it's really cool looking, it says Bitcoin on it. <laughs> I feel very official. Dick, how are you, my friend? I'm good, and I didn't just run into me walking down the street. I flew over here, Bix, just to be with you, because if you're in the neighborhood, I'm always gonna come spend a day with you, have a have a beer and uh, and you want to take me to task? You're gonna you're gonna do an intervention, so I'm here to let go, you go ahead and intervene. Go ahead, yeah. Well, Dick, I can tell you from the road to Ruta perspective that the good guys are winning every single battle that's being thrown at them, which is a huge change from the last hundred years, and we're very excited on the road to Ruta. We know who the power is, and we're taking them down. And it's everybody, like the people watching this video, that are going to make it happen, including the military, including the people within the Fed. But all of us are working together, and we want to bring you along for the ride, Dick. What do you think? Well, I'd love to be on that ride, but what, what are we doing to bring them down? How exactly are we bringing them down? Well, personally, everybody can do their best to expose what's happening. Talk about manipulation markets. Talk about the criminal behind the, our politicians. Talk about Pizzagate. Talk about all those things that YouTube and Facebook won't let talk about. And that brings exposure. That's not gonna kill them. What's gonna kill them is the destruction of the financial system. And we are real close to that. What do you think? Well, let me get this straight. When the financial system collapses, you think that's been planned. That, that's been planned. So who's gonna come out on top? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, so get back, back me up. I, I think that's been planned by both sides, the good guys and the bad guys. Okay, so they want the system to collapse. So tomorrow the system collapses, then what, what happens? It comes out on top. The people. We the people come out on top because they no longer have power over us. Their, the majority of their power comes from control of the financial system. They lost that control when Al Greenspan implemented a computer program to control the entire monetary system. Now we have the, the ability to press button and destroy the bad guys. It's a wonderful place to be. What do you think, Dick? Pressing a button will do that. The bad guys didn't, um, they didn't hear about this. It was in a comic book. They didn't read the comic book, so they're just going to let it happen? Or? The bad guys have used the system for a long They didn't know about it before, probably before I exposed it in 2007. But this has been an implementation since the 1960s. And you did an RV viewing on this specific topic of Bitcoin and came out with a picture that looked exactly like Alan Greenspan. So what do you have to say? Uh, remote viewing did show that it was not uh, somebody named Satoshi Nakamoto. What we saw was a multi-generational effort that spanned something going back probably to the 60s or earlier, uh, taken over by some new brainy people in the 70s and on into this type. So it's been an ongoing thing. But my question is, if the system collapses, you and I will be okay because we hold a, a, enough cr cryptocurrency and silver and some gold. What about all the normal people that are here on the beach that haven't heard of this when they wake up and they're wiped out? What are they going to do? Well, it's going to be very chaotic, that's for sure. But the reality of it is the vast majority of the problem is everybody's in debt. Debt is the biggest problem on planet Earth right now. From corporate debt to individual debt to city, state, local debt to mission debt, that's the biggest problem. When that debt goes away, 99% of the people will be better off without the debt than they were with the debt. That's, that's where the good side is. And then we got to figure out a way to move forward. I think crypto's be involved in that. What do you think? So, so the debt is just going to evaporate. And no Ab one's... Absolutely. With the crash derivative system, these banks are all interlinked with their derivative. Deutsche Bank, $45 trillion in derivatives goes down. You got JP Morgan going down, Bank of America, Citibank. Not one bank would survive a crash like that. If a crash like that comes, won't it freeze up the entire financial system? Trucks won't roll, trains won't deliver, airplanes won't fly. You uh, Just in time delivery, there will be nothing at the grocery store. And the people who don't have Bitcoin, Litecoin, and a few other tokens, are going to be looking for something to eat. So, well, that absolutely. Would be us. That will be absolutely. That's why the cans have kicked down the road for over 100 years. But the reality is there's a plan to move forward. And that plan originally included gold, 
pulling the gold out of the Grand Canyon, using gold uh, as a backing for the U.S. dollar, a new U.S. dollar, I would guess. But in the Road to Ruta comics, it's definitely all about the gold because this was done, the comics were done before Bitcoin. Now, I do think that the U.S. government owns the Satoshi Bitcoin, over a million Bitcoin. And they could allocate that fairly easily to the population and maybe even Charlie Lee sold his Litecoin to the population for allocation. I don't know, but there are plans going on behind the scenes as evidence in the Wishes of Rainbow comic book that came out in both 1981, the first time they crashed, tried to crash the system, and 2007, just a year and a half before the big crash of September 11th, 2008, is when the entire monetary system almost closed up. That, those are my hints and clues. And then you have Q and the good guy, bad guy battle. And I know you don't believe in Q. And I know you're kind of stuck in these bad guys that I, I, I grant you, they did control our lives for the last hundred years. But I think we have a way out. They've only controlled our lives for the past hundred years? Well, at least for the Federal Reserve notes. They've controlled our lives since the 1600s, I think it was with the Illuminati and all that bullshit, if you want to believe it. Or you go to the aliens, their overlords and all that, the Anunnaki. You can believe what you want, but you can also fight for what is right. We are fighting for what is right. What are you going to do? Believe, that's a word. So you believe this is going to happen? Uh, belief is a, a way to manifest to happen, absolutely. You can manifest your own destiny. Well, there is believing and there's knowing. I would say that you believe and I know. And there's a difference. I think you know what the past was like, absolutely. I don't think you know what the future is like. Well, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Sure, I agree. There's, okay. What, what we have here, and this is a somewhat of a semantical article, argument, but belief is based on not knowledge, it's belief on, it, it, belief is based on more winning, hoping. Knowing is based on knowledge of facts. Now there's, you can say, well, I believe this is true, and truth is different than facts. So if you, if you, something that's true here today on Maui, if you were to fight a Saudi Arabia, those truths wouldn't be true because you're in a different paradigm. Facts themselves are actually malleable. And this whole thing is malleable by people at a, at a level that you just wouldn't believe are going. Like Anunnaki. You could call them that. Yeah. If you go, if you go above, above the, you know, the, the, what do they call them, the, the family lineages, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the, and then who controls them? I think there's 11 over the 21. Yeah, I've, I've read so much stuff on it. The reality is, I do think belief goes a long way in manifesting reality. We are living in this, I do, I think, a holographic universe in a way because. If you look at the little bits of energy that make up us, they're put together, they're just vibrations, it's just energy. Yeah. So, and that's why the the, uh, the ability to manifest your own destiny is absolutely true. And the more people we get manifesting our destiny, say we get all 7 billion of us, and then there's the bad guys, 10,000. Say we all start thinking the same way, we can move, we can change everything we live in. How we get all 7 billion to manifest our destiny. You, you have a few thousand people watching. You, you have uh, more than me. I have a few thousand. You have a few thousand more. But there's, there is, there are control grids that are at such higher level that are steering this ship. And in and, and there's grids above that in the spiritual realm that are steering it as well. And we're working on those as well. I hope so, Vic. I really do. I, I have. I, 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 mean, I just not, started working on that one. I'm, I'm not fighting you. I I want the world that you want to manifest. I'll be right there with you. I mean, I uh, I would love to live in that world. But it does. It doesn't look like you're you're trying, Vic. I want you to try. Come aboard the good ship, Lollipop. Where? And try where, real hard. Where? I mean, like. 
we're gonna fight for freedom. I yeah. load my weapon, I report for duty, and like, where, where are we going? Where are we gonna, if, we gonna if, if, if it comes to that, I hope it won't come to that, but if it comes to that, absolutely. I'd fight for my country to my last breath. And I know a lot of people who would, not the, not the government. Let's, let's get this really straight. I'll fight for my country, not the government. Not our rulers, not our controllers, and not those people who you seem to still have control over. I'm fighting for the good side. And I think the people who listen to Q are absolutely on the same page. I think people who are working at the Fed to destroy the system are on the same page. Steve Dubot, the guy who invented electronic money with Alan Ginspan is on the same page. These are all people behind the scenes that control the money system that the bad guys you talk about have been using to control it. Now we have control. Okay.